Hi guys, welcome to Cisco Nate. Uh, take a gander at this video if it's your first time. If you like the content or find it worthwhile, like, comment, and subscribe. Everything you do helps me raise visibility of this channel. All right, so today's topic is going to be upgrading and installing the firmware for Firepower 4100 and the FXOS for Firepower 4100. Now this typically comes as a result of trying to figure out what FTD, Firepower Threat Defense Firewall, you want to run and then working it back to FXOS and one more step back to the firmware. So don't get worried about it. I'm going to show you everything here about which documents you should pull up, compatibility matrix, how to work everything together. It's going to be easy. You'll see here in just one second. All right, the requirements for this video are going to be pretty simple. Uh, number one, you need a CCOID. If you don't know what that is, or you don't, you know what it is, and you don't have one, stop now. Go talk to your PSS, or your CSS, because you will need that to download the proper software, unless you have it issued to you specifically by a Cisco TSA. All right. Uh, along with your CCOID, you need to make sure that it is associated with a contract and that that contract has the entitlements for the software. Essentially, if you haven't bought the product from Cisco, those entitlements are not made available for you to download the software. So verify those things before we start work on this video. All right, the second thing you'll need is you'll need a Firepower 4100. Now this video works for the 4100 and the 9300, but there are some slight nuances to how you go about the process if you're doing a 9300. I'll show you where the guides are. You'll be able to fork off of this video to do the same thing for a 9300. The last thing you need is internet connectivity. And if you're watching this video, then you've already satisfied that. So let's get to it. See you guys in a second. All right, guys, so we're getting started here. I'm gonna do the same thing I almost always do, and that is, first things first, let's go get that software. So head over to software.cisco.com. This is where you'll need your CCO ID associated with contracts, and those contracts need to have entitlements. So you're gonna to have to log in here. I'm specifically gonna to have to go through my Duo two-factor authentication, which is very nice. I just click a button on my phone, I'm in. All right. Now, if this is your first time, uh, you won't have these pop-ups here. So I'm gonna show you just like you would. You come down here, type Firepower 41. Now you can type 4100 or 4110. I'm gonna say 4100 and go ahead and click on this option here. And then I will follow the breadcrumbs down to my specific model. So in my case, mine's a 4110. Now I've already done some of the research to figure out which FX OS and which uh, firmware I am going to need for this. So I'm going to pause here and now take you guys to go find those documents so you can do that homework yourself. If you need to, after you find the documents, pause the video, figure out which ones you need, and then come back to and unpause the video. So the first thing we're going to need is you want to start with uh, you've got an FTD version you want to run and you now need to figure out what FXOS you need to run. So you're going to write, search for an FXOS compatibility and I typically just throw Cisco on there to make sure it's the top one that comes up. So you can see the top hit here for Cisco Firepower 4100 FXOS compatibility. That is what you want. So open that up. And what you want to do is look at these matrices they provide you here. And this is for hardware and software compatibility first. So if you got a 4110, you know that one FXOS 111 is not compatible. So obviously you don't want to grab that. But 4110, I'm going to go to the latest version, which is 2.8.1, and it is supported. So follow the columns, follow the rows, that is supported. Next thing you need to do is, this is where I say you work backwards, right? You figure out that, hey, um, I know 6.6 is the latest, but that's not our jam. We have 6.4.0 approved, that's what we're going to stick with. And these bolded numbers here, which if you read this, it'll tell you this, are the versions that are officially supported and extensively tested with this firmware, so or this FXOS. So if you know 6.4 is the code you want to run, you can run this 2.7. However, this, where it's bolded, is the version that was tested extensively to ensure that 6.4.0 ran flawlessly, or as flawlessly as can be. All right, so we figured out the FTD version, worked our way back to the FXOS version. Now we need to figure out how to get here from where we currently are. Not all of us are on the directly previous release. You may be all the way back on 2.1. You might be picking this up, this up from another engineer. You never know, right? So we're gonna go back to our search page here and I'm gonna search for Cisco FXOS release notes. And you want to find the release notes for the version of code you're going to. Now, the top one here is 2.7. 
I am going to eight. And I could have just appended that here, but I wanted to show you the easy way to find the information you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this in another tab here. And we're gonna scroll down. And partway through this, it's gonna tell you uh, from what versions you can upgrade to this version, right? So under the upgrade instructions, it says you can upgrade your device uh, from or to FX2 OS 2.8 if it is currently running FXOS 2.01 or later. Now I'm in luck, mine is, so it's a one-stop shop for me. If you were not, then you would upgrade your firmware and then upgrade your FXOS to the stepping stone version and then upgrade the FXOS again to get where you currently are. Now you read here, this is a lot of good information. This is why I always recommend opening these that it could take up to 45 minutes to upgrade the code to 2.8 version one. So the last thing I'm going to do is search here for FXOS firmware upgrade. And that's gonna pull up the firmware upgrade documentation I was talking about. So again, firmware is the drivers, FXOS is the OS, the firepower threat defense firewall is the app. And that's actually how it's kind of described if you've ever gone through FXOS. So you scroll down here and you see 1.0.18 is the latest version. It's great to look at this matrix here because the uh, descriptions tell you why some of these were released, such as if you wanna use the secure unlock feature, you need to be at 1.0.12 uh, or later. And then if you're using certain modules, a two port 100 gig network module, you need 1.0.16. So, uh, and some of these resolve P certs, which are actually quite important. So anyways, I'm going to 1.0.18 and my FXOS version is 2.8. So now I've got my upgrade path. I know I'm close enough that I don't have to do a stepping stone upgrade. We're gonna go ahead and start downloading the software. So to find the firmware and the FXOS, uh, once you're at the 4110 appliance, if that's your version of 4120, 93, whatever you have, click on Firepower Extensible Operating System. And then click on the version that best suits you. In my case, I'm going to 2.8.1. The image you need for the upgrade, if this is not a corrupt version, you're just doing a normal upgrade, is the FXOS image for Firepower. You wanna go ahead and click download and then accept the license, let that start. And we're gonna move down to here where it says firmware. I'm gonna blow this out and download 1.0.18. Again, it's just another file to download. Now you have two options while this is downloading real quick. You have two options to get the software on the firewall. Uh, one is via CLI and using FTP and the other is via GUI and HTTP. Now it is really nice whenever you can avoid having to set up, maintain and use an FTP server. Now granted we all almost always have these, but when you're running around with a laptop consoling in or hooking into these devices, it's not always that simple. Luckily enough, on the Firepower 4100 series, you can upload this software through the GUI. That doesn't mean you're scot-free and not going to be using the CLI because you have to use the CLI to perform the firmware upgrade, but you can get the software onto the device and then log into the CLI and execute the upgrade without having to set up or use an FTP server. Okay, so this is my home computer here, which is IPsec tunneled into my lab. I've actually already downloaded this software once on my lab machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and transition over to that box now. And that is through an RDP session. So here I am in my lab box, and I'm just going to verify that my files were indeed downloaded and are still here. So I'm gonna look for my FXOS K92811.105 SPA file, it is here. My FXOS K9 FPR 4K firmware 1018 SPA file, and they are both here. So this is great, we're in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and open my browser. We're gonna to head to the Firepower Chassis Manager. This is the IP that was put on the box for Fabric Interconnect A. So in my case, it's 192.168.222.10. So once this loads up here, I'm going to log in. <clears throat> and we're gonna start this process. 
So the first thing you want to do is head over to system at the top right. Oh, and you know what? My browser is not the right size on this one. Let me go ahead and change those defaults so I never have to touch this again. This is to make it easier for those of you that are viewing this on laptops or other devices that are smaller. So that's my default zoom is now set. I will force it to reload this page, make sure it is taken effect. <coughs> Now you can see my current version of FXOS is 2.7198. You can't see the firmware here, but that's viewable inside the box when we see a lion. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to system and updates. And this is how we can get the software on the box via the web GUI and not have to set up an FTP server. A word of note or caution. When you upload the firmware software, it will immediately tell you whether it's successful here with the pop-up toast, but it will not show up and will never show up in the available updates. They've kind of shimmed this in here, so it allows you to upload the file, and you can see here it'll say successful in a second, but it will never show up here, so for many people it will look like it didn't work because you're typically uploaded and then you see it here. It says successful, hit okay, I'm never gonna see it here. Everything's still good. All right, I'm gonna hit upload again, and now I'm gonna choose the actual FXOS upgrade file. I'm gonna upload it. It is perfectly fine to upload it now because that does not immediately install it. Now, <clears throat> from here, we are then going to move back into CLI on the box. So I'm gonna let this go ahead and finish. Uh, I don't need to worry about that for right now. And I'm going to CLI into that box through my management interface that I've hooked up through a terminal server. Now you guys connect however you want. I'm going in through a terminal server. All right, the first thing you wanna do is head to the scope firmware and then show package so that you can see what is here. Now we see my firmware was successfully uploaded. You see that the 2.8 is not quite finished uploading and that's fine. It's not a problem. We can just keep doing show package. Eventually it will show up and we wanna make sure that that finishes before we start the firmware update. So we're just gonna hang out here and keep updating. It should finish relatively soon. If you're actually really interested, you can do show download task or something like that. Let me see if it's here. I might have to check it a different way. Oh, there you go, 2.8, it's still downloading. So now that we know it's, it's still working on it, it's not a problem, just give it some time. So I'm gonna go ahead and pan out and we'll come back once that is done and continue. All right, so it should be just about done downloading. Oh. Nothing popped up. That means the download task is done. That's why show download task doesn't show anything. So now I'll do show package again, just to verify everything is there. And indeed we see FXOS K9 2.8.1105.spa. So that's great. Uh, now, if you wanna see what the GUI looks like, there should be a little piece of toast that says, yep, successfully uploaded. So I'll click okay. We'll go ahead and, cl uh, I'll leave this open for now. And then we'll head back to the CLI. So now I wanna, move from scope firmware to scope firmware install and then i want to type install package nope nope oh by the way on this you need to take note of the version number because that is what you need to install a package so i want to update the firmware first 1.0.18 and at this point i want to say install firmware pack version, and this is where you need that number, 1.0.18. It's gonna ask you if you're sure that's what you wanna do. It's gonna verify and install. Do you wanna proceed? Yes. Now this install, yes, we want to proceed. This install in particular for this firmware is a very hefty rewrite of a lot of code. The FPGAs, the network module FPGAs, the Ramans, there is a lot of stuff that needs to go through an update here. So this is going to take a long time. With that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and pan away again and we'll come back once this is done. All right, so we're back. And after about six or so different firmware upgrades, if you scroll back here, you can see these 
pipe bars. That's every time it was upgrading another different version of firmware somewhere. Um, it finally finished. Now you may notice some errors that pop up. This one says smart licensing is now failing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a lot of these are just transient errors. As it runs health checks before the system has actually started, it detects, hey, that thing's not working. Well, yeah, because it's not up and running. So give it a minute, give it like 15 minutes, make sure your login prompt is up, which ours is now. I should be able to now transition back to my web browser and we're gonna go ahead and go back to the home page and log in again because this device has already rebooted and it upgraded the firmware. That does not mean FXOS, that is the uh, firmware that has been upgraded. So we're gonna log in again. And then we're going to complete the FXOS portion of this upgrade. So we figured out the FTD version we wanted, figured out that meant we needed FX version X uh, in this case 2.8, and then because of FXOS version 2.8, we found out we needed to update the firmware. So we've done the firmware update, and we are now at the FXOS update that has to complete. So once we're at this page, I'm gonna go ahead and move over here to System, Updates. And the 928 that I uploaded before is now here. We can see it's visible, it says not installed. The update is as simple as literally clicking upgrade. Now it's gonna tell you this is gonna take a while and indeed it should take, they said up to about 45 minutes. So we'll go ahead and start the update process. Hit yes to proceed. And you will no longer get any real updates on this screen that tell you about what percentage it is and how close it is to done. If you really wanna track that, we can go back to CLI, but 99% of the cases, it's not really needed, it's not worth it. I'm just gonna go ahead and pan away and I'll come back when it's done and show you what it looks like. All right, so that was a long upgrade, admittedly. It looks like it finally completed. It logged me out, I'm back at the login screen. So let's log in here and see where we are, what version we have installed, just to verify everything's working properly. Oh, that looks good. So this upgrade did indeed take a very long time, but if you look right here, you can see we're at version 2.81105. That is our FXOS version. That is good. And the critical alert we saw earlier is now cleared. It says zero, one, one is how many there were, the older uh, before it cleared, now we're down to zero. So this is perfect. All right, that's it guys. Hope you have a good one. Hope your upgrades are successful.